The 30 year celebration of cochlear is uh, something uh, that one would never have envisaged when we started and uh, it's very exciting. You know, initially it was estimated by the government who initiated these things that uh, if an Australian company got perhaps 20% of the world market, we'd be doing very well. But to think that Cochlear has had up to, well, virtually 70% of the world market for nearly those 30 years is something unheard of before. Around Melbourne University, there are of the order of 10,000 life sciences researchers scattered through institutions, hospitals, the university, everywhere else. And so it, it's one of the four big concentrations in the world. And in a sense, it's the cradle in which Graham Clark was able to grow from. After 15 years of clinical research, we performed the first implant using the cochlear device on Graham Carrick on September the 12th, 1982. Then came the moment of truth when we switched him on for the first time. We had nothing to hold it up on, so we used a tennis uh, band to hold the uh, implant in outside. And you were standing right beside me. And you were pretty nervous, you were pretty anxious. You know? I was. Yeah, you were, you were really standing there looking at me, and I'm, oh, okay. And I was, no, no. And then Richard kept going, kept going. <laughs> and then that big second I heard a dong. I sort of went, oh, no, that. It was after 17 years profoundly deaf, and getting that sound back again. I was in heaven. Ninety-nine percent of the scientific community said it was not possible and um, I was seen as somewhere between a, a dreamer and a clown. Yes, so the Bionic Ear was a fantastic success, right? As one man vision driven through and through gets his uh, results over, finally gets a company going and the company now has something like 75% of the world market, I don't know, turns over a billion dollars or something. It's an absolute icon and I believe it can be done again. And to some extent, it's that belief and that example that Graham gave that gave us the vision also to work on a bionic eye. It's fascinating that it's all come full circle, that we've got Graham Clark back at Melbourne University, back in the same building that this, this was done and he's working on new advances in the bionic ear. People did say that, oh, because it works well enough, your job's finished. It's not finished. And there are so many, many people out there still who could benefit from a cochlear implant.